Hey, Emily Adams here, and I am back with part three of my story. So if you listen to part one or two, you kind of know you're kind of follow along this journey. Part three of my story is kind of the same timeline as part two, uh, when I left and went through my first divorce. And uh, part three is I'm going to talk more about going to college as a student, as a mom and working full time and what that process and then also about um, joining the gym and kind of like my journey on fitness. So part three of my story. So when I had left my got divorced and I uh, was going through my divorce, I refused to go to counseling and therapy. I tried counseling one time and it just felt like it didn't help. One, I really had it was a biblical counseling, so it was more like a Christian-based counseling. And I really did not want someone to tell me that, you know, there's a reason for this. There's a purpose for this. And I was like, yeah, you all don't know. The reason was I got out of that marriage so I could still be alive. Like, do you guys know what I went through? Like, I had all these, like, things, like, going on. And I, the counseling just didn't work for me. And what I found out was I needed something. I needed an outlet like a hobby or something, right? I had to do something with my life because every other weekend my boys went to their dads and it was so hard on those weekends not to go crazy. And I wanted to just drink and not do anything. But at the same time, I didn't want to get hooked on alcohol to numb out the pain because I didn't want to, I didn't want to feel the pain. I didn't want to feel the emotions. And then I decided that, hey, I am going to go and get me a gym membership for one. I have gained, I gained like 55 pounds with my youngest and I was like, I want to get in shape and like just be able to keep up with my boys and the idea of being an athlete that was always in my head, like, man, I want to be an athlete. Like that was always in my head. And when I joined the gym, I joined the gym where they had 24 seven access so I could go whenever I wanted. So anytime I didn't have my boys, I was working out and then I decided to uh, get a personal trainer, you know, to like do like learn how to lift properly and all these things. And I can remember like when the trainer asked me like, what are your goals? And one of them was to be, I told him it was like, I really want to be in shape for my boys and one day be an athlete. And there was this other trainer. She was a female and she was, she looked at me and she's like, you know, moms can't be an athlete, right? And it killed me internally. And I believed it. And I believed that for a long time that moms couldn't be an athlete. Until one day, and we'll, I'll, go, I'll come back to this later on, but I was like, okay, whatever. Like, I just want to get in shape right now. I just need to lose some weight. Started losing some weight and then started to, decided to run Spartan races and ran a lot of Spartan races. In one year, I ran um, a double trifecta, which is six Spartan races and went all over to run them. I was losing weight. I felt so much better about myself mentally and started gaining confidence in myself. And then kind of decided that, you know what, I'm done with the Spartan races. Um, and I'm going to, uh, we went, to, I had went to the Arnold's in Columbus, Ohio, and was looking for knee sleeves because I was starting to squat in the gym and I wanted something to protect my knees. And I walked up to the USPA powerlifting table and uh, the guy was like, so do you powerlift? And I'm like, nah, I just lifted, you know, and I run Spartan races. He's like, you should look into powerlifting. And he gave me the contact information for um, a group here in Indiana where I went to go watch a competition and then decided that, yeah, I'm going to compete. Like, I'm going to try this. And when I first started powerlifting, it was just, it was incredible because of the confidence and everything I had gained through it. And I'm going to do a longer video on the journey to, to powerlifting and what powerlifting actually gave me as a person. But this is just part of my story. And meanwhile, um, when I had gotten divorced and started working out, I also enrolled into Purdue University. I always wanted a degree and I knew that Purdue was a school that I really liked. And I had started to, I went to go see a student advisor and I had told her that, you know, I wanted, I wanted to get a bachelor's degree. I didn't know what I wanted to do it in. <laughs> I had no idea. I just knew I wanted to be the first one ever in my family to get a bachelor's degree. And I told her I want to do it in four years. And she was like, well, you're working full time, right? And I was like, yeah. And I had two, I have two boys. I'm a single mom with two boys. She's like, that's impossible. And I was like, no, I need a program for two years or for four years. And then she was like, okay, you know, I've never seen it done. Um, but 
if that's what you want, she agreed to, you know, make sure everything, all my classes were set up to graduate in four years. And those four years, <laughs> even in the summer, I took classes, like I stayed in year round over and over and over for four years straight to get my bachelor's degree. They were some of the most challenging times that I lived through. <laughs> I was working full time and then weekends that I didn't have the boys, I would study and uh, continue to do as much work as possible because I knew that when the boys came home, like I wasn't going to have, be able to concentrate with working and school and try to like still take care of them. So I did a lot of uh, my schoolwork that way and um, ended up graduating in four years and walking across the stage and knowing that I got my bachelor's degree and I have it and no one can ever take it away from me. It's something that I worked for and I got it. It was uh, by far one of the biggest accomplishments I felt and I felt so happy but yet there was a, something that was still missing a little bit internally. And I share the missing part because I think for like my entire life until COVID hit this year, I was always searching and looking for things until I realized like I held that within me. I just didn't know how to tap into it. And that's kind of what COVID gave me um, to be able to learn how to tap into myself and know that I can give myself what I need. So long story short, I got my degree and um, I had started powerlifting, did my first competition, and then I had been in a relationship for five years and we decided to get married. And looking back now, I can see like the, the red flags were there and I should have agreed to get married, but it was the right thing to do. And by the right thing to do is it looked perfect on the outside. Everybody thought we had it together, right? You know, we, we were, we did everything together. Um, we were super close, uh, but it still just didn't feel, it just still didn't feel right with me, but I thought it was just me and that I needed to do more like inner healing because of the fact that I've been divorced first for, for once. Like I've been divorced before. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just like what I'm feeling. What the feeling was is we weren't meant for <laughs> each other. Uh, and that's okay because I still grew and learned through that. And we got married and um, it wasn't just by all, you know, we did the whole wedding thing and it wasn't what I thought I would feel like on my wedding day. Um, and there was a moment of, man, I know I shouldn't be going through with this, but I thought it was just cold feet. And so went through with it, got married and it was completely different uh, kind of relationship than what I was used to. And I really wanted him to kind of be the leader, right? I was looking for someone to be the leader and someone to like grow together with. And we were growing apart and there was this time of, I knew what was going on, but I didn't necessarily address it. And so I started, you know, being more vocal about, hey, this is what's happening. And we tried counseling, it didn't work. And the day that our counselor told us, told us that unless you both decide you want to put in the work, I can no longer help you. And he looks at me and he was like, okay, like he didn't want to do counseling anymore. He didn't want the help. So we, we went home, long story short, we went home and I asked him like, what now? And he's like, well, we just continue to live our life. And I'm like, what? We just continue to live our life. And like, I'm now in this marriage that you don't want to make things work and things aren't working. And I'm seeing all these red flags. You're not being honest with me. You're lying to me about stuff. And it hurt. And we continued on this path. And I just like pushed all my feelings and emotions aside. I was like, Emily, just suck it up. Like you cannot go through another divorce. Like that kept running through my mind over and over and over. Don't get divorced. Don't get divorced. Like one is excusable, but two is not excusable. That's just like failure status. And that's how I felt. And being raised in the Amish culture of like, not, you're not allowed to get divorced. Like that's how I was programmed. So I already felt like a failure. I already felt like I had failed um, in a way of not being able to make it, not being able to be in a relationship. And it hurt 
and I, I worked so hard to just like keep going, keep fighting for our marriage and fighting. And finally one day I was just done. I didn't, I didn't fight for it anymore. I was just like, you know what, whatever happens, happens. Like I'm done. Like I'm not going to keep doing this. And then he came home one day and we had a, had an argument about something. I don't even remember what the argument was about, but he looked at me and he said, he said, you know what? I'm done. He's like, I want a divorce. I don't love you anymore. And a part of me wanted to cry. And another part of me was relieved because I felt like I was no longer trapped in this marriage that I knew what was happening and I couldn't do anything about it. I couldn't change things. I couldn't make him start being honest. I couldn't make him not do what he was doing. And so then we were in, then I was in divorce number two and I tried to fight for it. I tried to tell him, Hey, you know, I try to reach out and say, you know, can we at least just take a break and see if we can work through it? Nothing. Nothing worked. And looking back now, I can see why it didn't work. We were at, we were two different people in two different spaces. And, and that's okay. Like, that's, that's how it works, right? And I learned a lot. And after um, finalizing the, the divorce and everything, it really just hit me that, you know, after my first divorce, I never really found out who I was as a person and what I wanted. This time, I can guarantee you I'm going to do it. And that's really where my journey started to finding out who I was and what I wanted. And I got really super clear. There was times, like, I'm going to be honest with you, I fell into very depressed. Like, I didn't want to parent. I just I was, like, done. I, I didn't want to do it. Like, I was done after my second divorce. So I was like, who am I? I don't even know what I want. And it really led me to do the internal work and I started a lot of personal development. And I can remember I invested in myself for the first time, bought a course <laughs> of finding out who, it was kind of like an in, inner work course of like doing the internal work. And I did a lot of personal developments. And one day I had gotten so burned out, I had called my friend and I was like, I don't want to parent anymore. You know, here I am single mom. I refused, like I was the type of person that nobody helped me. I was like independent. Nobody helped me. Nobody like I did it all. I ran the boys to practice. I did everything. Had a career, was climbing the corporate ladder, had landed the job that I wanted, right? On the outside, I had it all together. But in the inside, I was so like hurt. And there was like so much stuff I had not processed that I wouldn't allow it. I would just stuff it down, stuff it down. And I continued this until I was so burned out, I couldn't go anymore. And I told her I was done. Like, I don't want to be a parent anymore. I don't want to show up. I just, I'm just done. Like, there's, like, I'm done. And she told me, she's like, you have two choices. She's like, you can either go check yourself in to get some help mentally, or you can take a momcation. And I was like, what? Like, first off, I ain't going to check myself into anywhere because no, no, not doing it. Like, that was not an option. So the momcation idea really led me to, for a while, I was like, no, like I can't do it. I can't leave my boys home. Then I got to get someone to watch my boys and all these things, right? But the more I thought about it, the more I realized she was tr it was true. I hadn't taken any time for myself. Even though I work out, I worked out every day for myself. Like that was taking time for myself. But mentally, I didn't take any time for myself. I just pushed myself in the back burner, poured myself into my boys, and I was so burned out. And so I decided to go with a, a momcation. So I get home and I open up the laptop after we get done eating dinner. And I'm like, yep, I'm going on vacation. So I told my boys, I was like, mom's, mom's taking a vacation. They're like, oh, okay, cool. Like they didn't care. And I was like, where do I want to go? And I'd never been to California. And I was like, oh, San Diego looks nice. So I booked a trip to San Diego, booked it. And a couple hours later after booking, I was like, what do I want to do that's on my bucket list? And I started giving myself like this permission slip to just live, like just, just go with it. And I was like, I want to go skydiving. So I booked my trip to skydiving and <laughs> um, it, I was like so excited about this, right? So the next day I go in and put my vacation in and I, you know, telling some people that I'm going on vacation. They're like, oh, who's going with you? And I'm like, no one, just myself. And the amount of people that looked at me like, are you okay? Like you're going on a vacation by yourself? Like, do you need help right now? Like, is something going on? Are you meeting some guy? And I was like, I'm just going on a vacation by myself.
myself. So I went and took the mom vacation by myself. The first day, um, I really, I sat on the, on the beach and I did nothing but cry. Uh, it was a lot of releasing things. The next day I went skydiving, which was an incredible experience of just like being able to, it was like the most freeing thing that I had done for myself. And afterwards it felt like such a badass experience of like, if I can jump out of a plane, I'm pretty sure I can do anything else. And that kind of led me to coming back home. I came back home, sold the house that me and the boys had been living in um, and moved. And then from there, I ended up realizing that my corporate world was not fulfilling me. And I made the decision. It was not an overnight decision, but I made the decision to leave the corporate world to do something that was more fulfilling for myself. And then fast forward, COVID hits and gives myself a complete life transformation, which I am going to make another part of my story on this because it's too long to share in here. But it gave me a complete life transformation and really shifted a lot of things for me. And for the first time in 32 years, I found that inner peace and that happiness that I had been looking for, that I had been chasing the entire time. And I can look back and now and see when I was going through my divorce, all those things. And I was looking for the happiness in marriages. I was looking for the happiness in my degree. I was looking for the happiness in my powerlifting. And everything I did, I was searching for that. And the entire time, even though I thought like, I don't know where this key is at. I don't know what's missing. Like somebody's holding the key here. I held it. I just needed to know how to get there. And that really led me to um, help others, lead them and guide them to find the same thing and to really step into their own power. So I'll do another vi uh, video on this, on um, my transformation as, as part of my story. So thank you so much for watching. If you have not done so yet, um, subscribe, hit the like button and share it with anyone that needs to hear this message.